Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us at PinFest, Pin Festival 2021. We're going to do a series of interviews of people that walk on by. I'm Emoto, and I'm going to have Crystal actually conduct the interviews. You know, she's been waiting for this time to shine. So thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, as we interview people, feel free to drop questions in the chat as well, and I will feed them to her to ask. Uh, let me open the chat too, so I can see what you guys are saying. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? Yeah. Go on. It's PG-13? Yeah. So I can say crap and darn. Yeah. yeah. And then when they talk, uh -huh. um, make sure you put the microphone into their Oh, face. I just want to talk into the microphone by myself the whole time. It's all about me. <laughs> all right. We're going to cut over to them now. All right. All right. There you guys are. Yep. And then straight to the camera. Hello. Hello, welcome. It is I, Crystal, from Marco Specialties. I am here with Christian Line and Sarah Line, otherwise known as Mr. and Mrs. Penn. How are you today? We're great. We're great. Yeah, How we're are you? Uh, terrific. Thank you for asking. What brings you to PinFest? We are absolutely uh, regulars here. We love PinFest. We come every year that we can. It's a great show. We get to hang out with all of our, our friends yeah. and uh, play some pinball. We just saw the latest and greatest Ultraman from Spooky. and. Um, I hear good things. Yeah, it's a really fun game. It was very fun. Yeah, I got to, got to hang out with them. Was Allentown your first show, your first pinball show? It was. Yeah. It first was. ever. Yeah. yeah. And you were like, you were like awed. You were like, this is amazing. Every year, coming yes. back. Honestly, yeah. you can't beat um, hanging out with your pinball friends and then playing all the pinball. And across the street, there are the best pretzel sandwiches you'll ever eat in your life. So uh, we have to come every year. There's lots of meats over there. Lots of meat. Lots of meat. Lots of meat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, what have you enjoyed so far the most about PinFest? Oh, I think it's just been like a reunion of all of our best favorite pinball people. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, like yeah. we didn't know we were going to see you. We were so stoked to see you. We were so stoked to see Emoto. Yep. Um, yep. Ron and Bruce from uh, Slam Tilt are here. Yep. And it just tons every, of friends. Tons of friends that, we, that we've missed uh, yeah. from the, you know, the pandemic over the last few years. Yeah. We haven't had a chance to really get together. And... Uh, and just catch up and play pinball together, and we're, we're just so happy that, that everyone made it out today. That's really great. Now, you both make pinball content, pinball podcast content for the most part. Uh, what? Tell me about that. Each of you. Oh. So I, I started out because of her. She's, she's kind of been um, my inspiration for it, so I need to kick off. Um, so I started Mrs. Pin's Pinball Podcast when um, our good friend now, Jack Danger was filming Texas Pinball Festival and my husband decided it would be a really good date night watch and I wasn't super happy about it. Not so happy. <laughs> and so I, um, I started streaming because I was like, this guy is just here streaming about a pulled pork sandwich. And since, of course, we have learned that Jack is like the freaking best. Yeah. All right, sorry, y'all. I totally messed up. Another one. 
I know. I accidentally deleted it. I was messing with stuff. Alright. Stand by. You just have to imagine what they're saying. While I do this, I'm gonna cut over. Wait, did I just... Let's go look at the show. Can you talk, Crystal? Grab the uh, uh, the input is selected on something else right now. The gear. Can you um, talk, properties. Crystal? Grab the uh, uh, the input is selected on something else right now. Well, gear. Can um, you talk, properties. Crystal? It's too much. Yeah, it's, it's too much. Like, can you hear us? It was just an audio problem. Now we're we're back to chit chatting. We're you can hear me. We can talk. Are we live? We're live. I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So then I started streaming and I just never stopped. I, I've. I've I've gone on a couple sabbaticals since then. I went back to work, so I don't have quite as much time. But yeah, and uh, I dragged the old you kind better of, half I in. dragged you into pinball, and you kind of dragged me into podcasting. Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah, it's been cool. It's like a, co, a co-existing sort of... And, and you guys still managed to have a great marriage? Absolutely. Awesome marriage? Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Yep. I love it. That's great. What are your pinball podcasts, for the people who do not know? 
Well, we've got the super awesome pinball show. Yeah, with Christopher Franchi. Yep. Correct, yeah. Yep. And Mrs. Finn's Pinball Podcast. Now, you each focus on different things on each of your pies. You you do interviews? Yes. Do yep. Interviews. yep. We, we try to, lately, we focus primarily on game reveals. And if, if something new comes out, we'll try and uh, get the design team on the show and talk to them about how the game came about and, and some info about it. And uh, it's been really fun doing that with Chris Franchi, who's an amazing artist and has been in pinball for you know a lot longer than I have. And, uh, and an and editing ninja. He, he edits a mean podcast. Really? So, edits like yeah. a boss. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really good. And Mrs. Finn's podcast is a little bit more stream of conscious. It is. It's definitely. Yeah, I no, like I know. I uh, we just talk, I talk about all of our pinball adventures. I try to focus on um, the women in pinball, Womp. And um, oh, also she makes these really awesome earrings, which she just gives to people because she's like pinball Santa. Pinball earrings are amazing. And they bring joy. Yeah. Joy, yes. That's great. That's about it. That is about it. I don't have anything else to say to you people. Oh, thank you so much <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. Thank you for coming. Yeah, right? It's so good to be back out there. Yeah, it is a little scary. I'm scared. But it was really cool to see you and see Moto and to see everyone else. I meet so uh, many new friends. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Thank you for joining us. It was yeah. good to see you, and we'll hang out. We'll play some pinball. Sounds good. Dollar games. Yes. Absolutely. All right. All right. Who's next? Send somebody, some, send somebody else to me. All right. Sounds good. See Bye, guys. See ya. interview but uh, I think he saw that we were having problems so who's next what am I gonna talk about I know I'm live what do I say I'm gonna interview a moto this is my coworker and boss well you're not really my boss. you're kind of my boss like uh, the operator. Yeah. Yeah, the operator. That sounds sci science fiction-y. Operator Emoto. <laughs> Emoto, what brings you to PinFest? Well, I am here with Marco Pinball, Marco Specialties. I like to call him by Marco Pinball. It's not catching on. My Marco Pinball. My Marco Pinball. Yeah. So anyways, we, we built uh, a booth. We're selling a ton of parts. This may, in fact, be the only show that we're bringing parts to. So hopefully you're here. If and you're not, you should come here. Yeah. You should come here. And we're just trying to create content, highlight people. We see some of Todd Tucky's crew over here, so we're going to try to get them in soon. And stay tuned for, what day is it today? Today's Friday. Today's Friday. OK. Sunday is National Pinball Day. Oh, yeah. Joe Trevano is in the chat. He actually helped create National Pinball Day. It's Roger Sharp's birthday. Yeah. And we will be doing uh, a few deals on our website. So stay tuned for that newsletter that I'll blast out Sunday morning. That's also the day that pinball was like legalized. Right. right. The, the shot heard around the world, I think is what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Hi, Joe. So let me find more people for you to interview. You're doing a great job. Thank you, I'm trying my best. It's a very high stress environment here. We're trying to sell parts. We're trying to get people. Uh, we're trying to get people in to interview. Uh, you know, it's exciting. It's great. <laughs> My favorite thing about the farmers market. I haven't spent a lot of time at the farmers market. Uh, I did like the bagel that we had this morning. Are we ready? Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Who, what is your name? Uh, I'm Tim. I help out at TNT sometimes. You help out, okay. So what brings you, well, I'm assuming that TNT brings you to Allentown. Well, yeah, the pinball, arcades and stuff. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What have you enjoyed the most so far? Uh, the Ultraman. The Ultraman has been pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the Halloween because uh, I'm a big yeah. uh, horror fan. Sorry. Okay, no, okay. They don't have marks, so. Yeah, we need marks. We need marks. We're so yeah, unprofessional. Where's my T mark? Yeah, we need a T mark over here. Hey, I used to do Phil. I this guy knows what's up. He, yeah. he knows what's going on. We need on. an Apple yeah. box over here. The Apple box. That's for a moto. 
I mean, Emoto is as tall as me. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that, um, well, you're the guy that does the other stuff. He's freaking. Oh, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, look, up, stuff. Yep. look up at him. Yep. So where is your? Where is the rest of your crew? Uh, I was gonna call uh, Todd over here. I, I guess he's eating right now. Okay, that's fair. So you get a break, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Right, cool. Great yeah. Work on stuff. What kind of work have you done? Uh, well, I used to do uh, when I, about I used to do grip and electric and stuff. I worked. I have IMDb. I'm on. If you look up Timothy E. Roth, you can see stuff that I'm I've done. Uh, unfortunately, rest in peace. Uh, one of my favorite things I've worked on was uh, Laid to Rest. It's a horror movie. Uh, the director just passed away like four months ago. So oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. That's cool. That's. Have you ever done like a lot of pinball stuff too? No, I just started like uh, how I got into pinball and stuff uh, was from TNT. Before, I didn't I like pinball, but I didn't really love it. And then I st I, w I did more like I went to like the Gallop and Ghost and stuff. I played more arcades and things. So yeah, we're about to go out there in uh, two weeks. We're going out there for the anniversary. That's awesome. Are you going to see anything else out there like the Stern Factory or anything like that? Uh, uh, well, we saw the Stern Factory uh, for when we had uh, Chicago Pinball Expo. Okay. So yeah. I'll probably see it again then when everybody does. But uh, while we're out there, we're supposed to go to the Prince Arcade, and of course, we'll go to the Ghost. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, Galloping Ghost has expanded a lot in the last uh, few yeah, years, that's, I think. That's awesome. Yeah. He's such, such a nice yeah. guy. He made like a, a pinball expansion because before he just had the arcade. I think he had only a yeah, few pinball machines. Yeah, yeah. The, well, if you like arcades too, every Monday uh, is uh, Monday Mystery. They put another game on the floor, and then when they put new pinball machines on the floor. Uh, they do it on Fridays. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. I, I've only been there once, and I got to see it just before it opened up. And he had like a version of the Predator pinball machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to I got to play yeah. it for a little bit. Sometimes it's down, but yeah, it's it's an okay game. That's really awesome. That's so cool. Uh, let me think here. So, what is your pinball your favorite pinball machine like right now? Mine right now. Hmm. For new or old, uh, either. First, this. first thing comes to mind. Uh, well, I have a 19. My first pinball I bought was a Sorcerer, from. Uh, but uh, my twin and I bought a brand new LE Turtles, and uh, but what what came out recently that's really fun. I'm trying to think, uh, what would I like to play the most? Guns N' Roses was fun. Okay. Uh, I always like uh, Keith Elwin games. Keith Elwin games are always great. Always knocks them out of the park. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like Iron Maiden. <laughs> I, I like Jurassic Park. Avengers. They're all great. Avengers yeah. is great. Oh yeah, great. Yeah. No, but it's the Pro. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the Pro, but for the premium with the with the extra ramps and stuff, sure. it's always it's great fun. It's yeah. a good flow game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, what else are you gonna do while you're here? Uh, we're Just follow Todd around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> a basically follow Todd around. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're about to go get some food, and then actually I got to work. Adult, I'm working a uh, night work too, so I help Todd out, and then I got to go do my normal job. Wow, just busting, huh? Yeah, you got to. I, I need, you need that money for all those pinball machines. Yeah, yeah, right on, right also, on. Also, I want to get a nice camera, so yeah. There you go. Get to it. Well, it was right. a pleasure it's talking to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank sure. You, all right. See you guys later. All right, who's next? Put this down for a hot minute. Hot mic. What's next? That was an awesome interview, Crystal, yeah, also with Timothy Roth from TNT Amusements, and Vince is over here testing his big house and going. Beep, 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 beep. Come on in. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Todd, Crystal. Crystal made it bigger so I could fit in the frame. Well, I was getting tired of Ty telling me to constantly move move to the frame. Do I fill the frame nicely? I think so. Amoto, does Todd look good? Yeah, he looks great. How are you? Oh, boy, we had so much fun today. This is such a great show because this showcases 
like stuff you're never going to see anywhere else. And there's so many games. There's a lot. This is my first uh, pin fest. Aha. Well, as you know, this is one of the biggest shows probably probably on the East Coast and maybe other places too because of the spacing. Yep. He's rented the whole place. Yep. So it started where he only had one part of this. Okay. Then he went to half of it, then three quarters of it, yep. and now 100% pinball, the yep. whole place. Yep. And then there's an outside place too, an outside place. We never got there today. I haven't gotten there yet either. We spent five hours doing live video yep. and we covered, we didn't cover everything. Wow. So we didn't get everything covered, but we did a lot. Yeah. So you, you're you located in, you're not too far from here. An hour, an hour south here yep. uh, in Southampton, PA, Bucks County, technically okay. Bucks County. And uh, uh, we like this show a lot. There's also the Pintastic, which is in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, <coughs> that you guys do too. Okay. And then there's the Pimble Expo in Chicago. Chicago. My hometown. And we'll do those too. I can't do all the shows. Right. So I can drive here, I make this show okay. Yeah. And then uh, Sturbridge, uh, Mike from Automated Services generously uh, puts me up there. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been talking all day, so. Oh, yeah, don't take your time. Up. And then Chicago, Rob Burke has me out there for that show. <coughs> oh boy, I'm coughing up a storm. Do you you know, water? probably later. We're, we're actually going to go out, you know, the farmer's market's right across the street, mm -hmm. but unfortunately it closed at 7. Oh. So we're going to have to head to the diner. We're just about ready to leave. Okay. Well, I'm but glad that we caught you. Show's all day tomorrow, too. Mm -hmm. So it's 10 in the morning till uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Now, tonight, you know, you have another two hours to go. I do know, and I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I'll, it'll be fine. Are you buying any parts here while you're here? Uh, well, yes and no. I brought my car. So I wasn't able to get a lot of, I wanted to buy some games. We're going to try to fit a cocktail table game in the back seat of my car, okay. which I bought. If not, Timmy's going to take it. Uh, but uh, I generally do my parts by mail order. Okay. But I, today, for instance, I got in a shipment of fluorescent light ballasts. Okay. They're the ballasts used in the tops of all the arcade video right. games. Yep. I got a hundred of them because that's the only way you can buy them to get a discount. Yeah. But who buys a hundred fluorescent ballasts that's selling games? Not a, not a uh, distributor where it's home sales, but right. here I, I'm actually, so we, we go through a lot of ballasts. Okay. We're big on ballasts. But Marco supplies us with all the dot matrix mm -hmm. replacements. So all the new LED lighting for the shuffle alleys, the pinball machines. Uh, as a matter of fact, we, we decided we, all, we put all LED lighting on all shuffles we sell now. We build that into the price, mm -hmm. but the old displays, like half of them have the digits are corrupted or, yep. uh, you know what? Then I tell the customer, look, I put brand new rubbers, I put new plastic, I changed all the pins, I put uh, refurbished the electronics and we put brand new displays in. And that's a big selling point. So if you're selling your game, you change out to a, an LED is such a no brainer. Mm -hmm. It's like crazy not to. And the best part is you can sell your old displays. Yes. Get rid of them. It's, it's amazing what, what a difference it makes just installing a new light. Like, and people, I don't think people realize it until they actually have the light there and it's new and it's bright and you're, they're like, oh yeah, actually this does look much better, right? There's such improvement. And yeah. uh, it, it's really helped the, the industry. The games look different. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're bright, they're vibrant. They you can light you. spots, yes. And you can light spots that were never lit before. Yep. Yep. Exactly. It's it's pretty it's pretty it's great good stuff. And I'm glad that you uh, I'm glad that you order with us. Every time that we get emails from you, I'm always like, oh, Todd's Todd's in the inbox. Let's let no, it's not like that. It's more like it's more like let's take care of Todd. Uh, they ship out. Well, they ship me out right away. I'm sure you do everybody right away. We try our best. Usually one day or two. They actually respond on the weekends. Oh, that's a new thing because we have seven day ops now. So they're sitting there on the weekend, so I'll send an email, oh gosh, I need these parts on Saturday or Sunday, and I get a response back. I say, oh, great. We'll pack them and ship them Monday. Yep. That's good great. stuff. Yep. Am I in trouble? <laughs> oh. Go ahead. Leak, leak 
I leaked it. I leaked the news. I wasn't supposed to like. Well, he kind of leaked it. You're going to blame me. Well, that's easy. Oh, gosh. With the LED lighting, number one. Uh, the way you, that we can rebuild games that we couldn't originally. Yeah. Old Gottlieb System 1s, we can buy the new circuit boards. Okay. So nobody's out there fixing the old ones. Yep. All of our board repairs are, are swamped. Yep. So if you try to get your board repaired, you may have to wait a while. Yep. I smell with my nose some something smoking. So something is burning right now. Coil. I think it's. I think it's coil up. There's a coil burning. It's over. that big house. The big He's, house is burning. Smells good. See the. Smells good. <laughs> this is called a coil sensitive nose. I can smell it too. It's almost like plastic too, yeah. right? A little bit. It's the bobbin, I bet is. Uh, Ooh, that is strong. Soundboard's running. Do you see the blinking light? I do see that. The soundboard's running. It means the five volts is running. Right. So there's something else wrong. We're looking at a, a big house, which uh, this operator has been working on all day. And we, we suspect that that's where the smell's coming from. <laughs> it's giving a lovey's. Right? Pizza crap reset board. Listen, put a reset board on all their system ADAs and Bs. You take it out and you smash it. It's the biggest, it, it causes this to happen. The reset Good. Now turn it off and on. Do the dumpster. He's giving, he's, he's. Oh, I gotta, I gotta pick the deal. Throw them in my dumpster, though. Real, real time Todd Tucky uh, tech, tech support here. He's saying the the five volt lights no longer yeah <laughs> yeah we got <laughs> okay your five volts screwed up okay thank you so what's the issue the issue is simple the five volt power supply you have to squirt the five volt adjustment with contact cleaner okay. you have to and then you turn it up and down like a thousand times well twenty times. Then you reheat the the uh, regulator, okay. and then you reheat the header pins, uh. and then that power supply is good to go for 20 more years. 20 years? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's something. The game, the board is running now, but it's starving for electricity. <laughs> See, it's, now it's running, but the sound board is not. Turn it off and on. <laughs> they can't see what we're doing. Oh, yeah, we're doing no, <laughs> Oh, you did, okay. Is he okay, now the sandboard's running. It's flashing fast, so there's another problem. You're, it's got to be your five volts. Adjust your five It's got to be the five volts. It should be. You know. But there's basics you do with the games. That system is very dependable yeah. if you do certain things. The five volt regulator, you, you, I never have a problem. I never have to order. The game's not happy now at all. So, Todd, you are obviously extremely knowledgeable. Not really. Well, I mean, you're you're learn. diagnosing from from 20 feet away. You should learn. Yeah, I worked. I I've rebuilt so many of those Gottliebs. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I, we've been in business 42 years. Okay, but how long have you been working? Uh, I I I started working on games probably 50 years ago. Okay. When I was 16 years old, 15, I started fooling with games. I didn't physically go into the business until 79. Okay. But I was doing hobby stuff, and that was mechanical machines. Then I bought my first digital machines even before I opened my business for my uncle. So I, you kind of learn, because I didn't know how flippers worked, yeah. and you kind of stumble in it. But it's all common sense. This is one of the few businesses where I could teach you or anybody that knows very little. In two hours, I could, I could, you could learn so much so much common, easy to do knowledge. Sure. That would make a great seminar. Give people a two hour seminar and learn, yeah. teach everybody all kinds of repair techniques. Expo panel. Yeah. That would make a great that would make a great seminar actually. Actually the seminar that's not the one we're doing. We're doing a seminar on what to look for when you buy a machine. Okay. And because the Chicago Expo is featuring video games this year in addition to pinball. 
we're going to do buy video and buy pinball machines. We're doing that with Frank Lindenmuth. Okay. And uh, he's the one that came up with the idea. And we think that'll really help people to look for rust, to look for uh, odd repairs. It's, I feel like it's very important, especially because it's kind of a dying hobby and there's not a lot of people who know how to do tech. It's not really dying. I, I didn't mean to say dying, but the, as far as technical, mi like technically there minded. Are, there are, there's a lot of people that are very interested. Timmy, for instance, is very easy, interested in learning the technical parts of how to fix the games. And now there's more interest. You can obviously see from the show, yeah. there's a lot of fresh faces that want to buy a game, yeah. one or two games. But everybody, you too, are going to have to figure out how to fix basic stuff. Yeah. You got to, or you're yeah. going to be right out, you yeah. know. <coughs> I got another cough in there. I didn't want to. All right. I'm going to go over and see if I can. Okay. Help. Yeah, it Thank was a pleasure talking with you. Todd. You have to have me back. We will. We will. And anytime you want to call oh. us up. Uh-oh. Hey, we got a heckler. Oh. We got a he Oh, oh no. I didn't expect the first. <laughs> <laughs> you got balls. Adios, guys. Thanks, Sad. Where did the other one? Oh, there it is. That was a great interview, Crystal, with Todd Tucky from TNT Amusements. I'm pretty sure he created pinball content on YouTube. He was the first. So if you haven't followed his YouTube page, I think you're on Twitch and Facebook now too. Oh, we just we have a set set of questions, so they can pop all the interviews up. You just ask like random shit. Yeah, we just have conversations. Because I was saying, there's a lot of like interviews. So ask you like like the one I had to do for Todd for that that one like he the because it didn't feel natural at least to me. It looked okay later. But they cut it. They kept asking the same questions, and they were asking things that like weren't. They don't jive. So yeah. it was like you're trying to answer something. I mean, it cut okay, but it was like he kept asking, and then he's like, because he had a narrative, he keeps like right. saying the same thing. That's why we just like to have conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it a little bit more natural. But you know what my favorite question is? What's that? And you can answer it for me from your perspective. Uh, how tall do you weigh? How tall do you weigh? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that doesn't make sense. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, I guess. But that's the way to say you're, you're, you're We'll be like, back with more interviews. Person.
All right, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go yet. Crystal, hold on, hold on. <laughs> You're not on it. You're not on it. Hold on. Poor Wynn. Wynn and Marie. Spooky pinball. We got Bug in the house. Nice interview. Crystal, can you switch sides with your interviewee? Would that mess you up? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now he's off. Now the talent is confused. All right. <laughs> are we ready? We are. What is your actual first name? Corwin. Corwin Emery. It's a good name. Yes. Or Bug uh, from Spooky Pinball. He is here. He made it all the way out here. You said 17-hour drive? It was supposed to be 14. We, we sure made it 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With an Ultraman in tow. Tell me about yeah. that. So, uh, well, we were supposed to bring Ultraman in Halloween, but we are bad at scheduling. And uh, my dad, Charlie, has Halloween at a horror convention in Chicago this weekend. So we brought Ultraman. All right, fair enough. It seems to be doing very well as far as the reception. The line has been out the door since I've been here. Yeah, so very fortunately, we've had a line all day long. And any time I turn around, I'm like, oh, the line's getting small. Like 10 people funnel in and <laughs> they, get, they get lined up. So yeah, the reception's been very good so far. Have you been getting good feedback? Very good feedback. Yeah, we've, uh, we're watching Pinside like hawks. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so awesome. There. I'm so happy for you guys. I, all of the things I've heard about, like what you've been doing with the new stuff is, is really great. And um, I, like you guys have a new factory now, right? Or a new place? Kind of. Yeah. So uh, we, we moved into our new factory a year ago and quickly ran out of space again, especially after we sold the 1750. So we uh, are building an addition, which should be done very soon. And uh, when we get rolled into there, we'll be able to do much bigger numbers than we currently can. But uh, our current numbers are decent too, so. That's really awesome. I'm so glad to hear it. It's, I know that you guys uh, take a lot of pride in being boutique pinball, but I guess sometimes you have to make strides and you have to do some other things yeah. to make changes to. At what point is it not boutique? I don't honestly know. I guess when you make more than like, more than a thousand a year? All right. Maybe okay. Not. I don't know. I don't know. I'm <laughs> well, rest in peace, boutique. <laughs> oh, no, now they can't be boutique anymore. Just not boutique. Yeah. Just not boutique. 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 <laughs> not bougie boutique. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, have you gotten a chance to go around the fairgrounds a lot and, and check stuff out? Oh my gosh. So, the fairgrounds. Are you talking about the market across the street? It's because. Like Okay, all of it. I'm ready to talk about the market too, as long as the show, because the market's awesome. Everyone, everyone keeps talking about. All I've had is a bagel. The bagel? I, I hear the pretzel sandwich is really good. Oh, I did have a pretzel sandwich. It was like a turkey Reuben. It was delicious. Yeah. But I want like ice cream. I want seafood. I want yeah. as much as possible. They so have a vacuum a grill next year. We've decided we want to bring. We had room in the trailer for a grill, and if we would have known what we were getting into, we're gonna grill next year. So come to the spooky. Right. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy some fish. Is it gonna be like a bring your own meat kind of deal? It's yeah. B y o m. Bring, yeah. Bring your, own, bring your own meat. You heard it here. Spooky, spooky boutique, meat, delicious. Um, are you buying parts? Are you doing anything else? Or are you just? I'm looking at a few games that I want to buy, but. It's just, you know, you know how it is. Space, time, money, all of it. Yeah. It's it's a lot of fun, so. But yeah, no, the show's great. I've had time to walk around a little bit here and there. I've only played like one game or so. Spent a lot of the time just standing by the Ultraman game, trying to talk people through all the rules and what's going on and just answering questions. I'll have to stop by and play a game I haven't yet because, again, the line has been bonkers, so I yeah. just haven't had a chance to do so. So We set it to one player, one ball, so that the line does keep moving. So it, it's a long line, but we keep it moving. So. That's like a classic uh, like first show reveal move, right? That's what happens a lot. It's like, well, we, we had it to two ball, and then some people were really good at pinball here. So That's what happens sometimes. We keep it moving, so we put it to one ball. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, it was uh, it was good to talk to you, Bug. Uh, nice to see you. I'm, it was a surprise. I didn't realize that Ultraman was going to be here. Yeah. Done. So it was really awesome to play. Um, play spooky games. I don't know exactly. where can where can people play? Not yet, huh? It's probably not. There aren't any games out on location yet. They'll be shipping very soon. Oh yay! That's great. Awesome. Well, yep. it was a pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. It. Bye. For Starship Fantasy. She does a very good job. And then I sell them.
<laughs> what, can you hear her going? Hi. So you are, you are Larry. Yes, I'm it's Larry. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice I've spoken to, to you, you on the too. phone before. You have. That's Good. great. Great. Cool. So, uh, so you have a booth here? I do. I have actually six booths. Six booths. Yeah, with ramps spread out over the whole. Area. Okay. And are you doing? Are you doing well this weekend? Yeah, we're doing okay. And yeah. we have um, the ramps, all the ramps that we make. And then we have a lot of classic playfield parts. Okay. Yeah, and terrific. That's good. Yep. Have you been to Allentown every year? Um, I think I missed one year because I got sick. And it was in the hospital. But other than that, since uh, probably 2013, I've been coming. Not bad. And it's a long drive. It's like 2,400 miles. So where, where are you out of? Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Ooh. Yeah. That's like a three-day trip. It was three days at 800 miles a day. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I'm glad that you made it and you Mia made it. made it. Yeah, that's great. So what have you enjoyed about the show so far? Um, seeing everybody again. This is the first show since the pandemic hit, and it's just really, really great to see all your friends again. Yep. The people you know from the show, it's just it's wonderful. That's great. I was not anticipating seeing as many people that I know, so every single time I see someone, I'm like, it's you and yeah. it's such a great feeling yeah i'm doing the same thing so it's really people you really don't see anywhere except the pinball shows but they're still your friends because you've seen them every year for the last seven eight years absolutely and then also you get introduced to new people just like at most shows you yeah. meet new faces absolutely. talk to new people it's always it's always fantastic so um so the good thing about starship is i've hired another employee okay and i'm really hoping that we can produce a lot more new ramps than we've been able to before. It's been like two or three a year because it's a pretty long con uh, process, but now I've got somebody who's gonna work on it probably full time. That's great, that'll- so be able to turn out a lot more new ramps. That's good, it'll take a little bit of stress off of you, I imagine, as well. Yep, yeah. the next ramp we're gonna come out with is uh, NBA Fast Break, the right ramp. Okay, and okay. And we'll be doing Brian Stokes, Dracula, Hurricane, and the rest of the Corvette ramps. Okay, that's awesome. That's yeah. great. Are these like highly, they're highly requested ramps, I'm guessing? Yeah, you know, there's so many pinballs. I have probably 140 different ramps, and it just barely touches the market of what people really want. What does your facility look like? Is it pretty significant, like pretty big? Or? Well, our shipping department is my three-car garage. Okay. Our overstock department is my two-car garage. Okay. <laughs> and the storage and manufacturing takes place in a 4,200 square foot house. All right, there you go. You get it done, though. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it works for you, that's. It works. That's great. It works. That's great. Hi. Oh, she's a good dog. Yeah, she she's is. She's a good friend. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. How's she do at the shows? You always bring. You know, she always brings. She loves people. Yeah. Um, but she doesn't like other dogs. That's fair. And so if there's another dog in the room, we always have a problem. But that's because she's just being protective. She's sure. the, the worst she's ever been without me is like a period of three hours. Oh. And I had to hold her for the next two days. <laughs> that was my punishment <laughs> for leaving her alone. She's like, why did you leave me? Yeah. She's a good dog. She is. She's a sweetheart. Terrific. So uh, any other plans for the rest of the weekend? Are you going to see anything? Are you going to go across the street to the farmer's market everyone keeps raving about? My girlfriend is already over there. She's wanting to move here. <laughs> because of the farmer's Delicious. market. Yep, so she's going to buy a bunch of stuff and we'll take it back home. Okay. We came here in an RV, so we have a refrigerator and a freezer. Okay. And she's just going to go shopping and we're going to bring it home. That's great, that's great. <laughs> now, when you mold your ramps, how does that work? What does that process look like? It's uh, plastic called PET-G. Okay. It's got a chemical name. I can never remember it. Sure. And you heat it up to a specific temperature mm -hmm. and then you suck it down on a, on a form. And it makes the ramps, and they have to cut it with a bandsaw, and then you have to cut it with a CNC machine. Okay. And it's a long process. It's not rocket science, but sure. it, it takes some technique. Yeah. And to get it right and to make sure, I'm sure you have to go through a lot of, like, practice runs, right? Yeah. 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 I didn't. I was very lucky because I bought a business from Pinball Inc. Okay. and James Laughlin. Yeah. And he actually taught me how to do the business, and I learned a lot from him, so I didn't have to learn on my own. That's great. Valuable, valuable education. Yeah. Right? But every new ramp is an issue. You know, you have to, sometimes we have to test fit them three or four times before we get it right. Right. Um, 
But they're good. They're thicker. They're better than the original ramps, and people love them. That's good. Anything that'll hold up longer in this hobby is like yep. fantastic. Because a metal ball is being thrown at everything, right? Yeah, that's true. All right, Larry. Well, it was a pleasure to talk to you and to meet you, to put a face to, to the you. to the voice. So, right, cool. Thank you. It's great. Yeah. Take care. All right, Crystal has one more, and she's gonna take a quick break, and then I'll jump in. Oh, and hold on. Wait for it. Do you guys want to guess? Who this is? We had one rap ramp guy, Larry Rosenthal, and now presenting. Doing my interviews like in a podcast. Right, you guys are live. Oh, we're live. We're hot. We're great. I'm here with Jody. What is your last name, Jody? Gontero. John Taro. Gontero. Gontero. Uh, he works for Rampomatic. He is the sole, sole proprietor, right? Chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> Come on, I love it. I love you. So you're selling your wares here at Allentown. I am for the first time. First show I've done. So ever. 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 Congratulations. Welcome. Is this the first show you've ever been to? No, I've I've been here several times before, but this is the first as a vendor. Okay. So That's awesome. That's great. It's a different perspective. About how many ramps did you bring? Boy, there's a couple hundred here. Okay. At least. I mean, I I, I know a dollar figure, but I don't know a, a ramp number sure, per se. Sure. But several different games. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I probably have 30 games here. Okay. So. That's awesome. How long have the, how long has Rampomatic been in business? About three years now. I really hit it hard starting the beginning of this year, though. So I've sure. like become much more legitimate starting the, the beginning of January. So yeah. it's really grown quickly since then. Mm -hmm. So I have to, you know, I have a day job. So right. I'm uh, really busy. And I have to regulate myself a little bit more. So sure, sure. time management. Take a little break after this show. Yeah. I've been yes. I've been working on this show since the probability of it happening in January. So <laughs> I know that we we've been buying from you for for a short time. You and Kyle have been talking. Yes, and it's been great. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Marco is great people to work with. Aww. I just top to bottom. That's so nice. Thank you. We and we're glad to work with you. So, uh, what have you enjoyed the most about Allentown so far? Um. You know, meeting a lot of people that you talk to online and you hear about, and then you're like, oh, well, this, I'm such and such. It's like, oh, it's finally you get to put a face to a name. Yep. And yep. all the Marco people that I haven't met yet, you know, yep. it was it was cool. It's so. always great. That's my probably my favorite thing about shows because, I mean, I could talk anyone's ear off, meet new people, have new experiences. It's all really awesome. It's good you guys are interviewing me today because I will not have a voice tomorrow. I hear that, yeah. <laughs> Kyle barely has a voice. This is a long day. It is a very long day. Tomorrow's a long day. Yeah, it will be fine. We'll make it through. We'll, we'll it'll be it. it'll be terrific. We got food across the street. That's the motivator. I think they're closed now. Yeah, but everyone keeps talking about the food at this place, and we still have Wawa. Wawa. You know, I'm a Sheets person. I'm from Sheets Country, but Wawa's got good subs. Okay. Wawa is uh, it's like what? a rest. It's like Sheets. It's a rest stop. It is That's Philly really Sheets. True. Wawa is Allen Altoona Pittsburgh Sheets. Is like that's that side of the state. Do not. Wait, and so which so, one are you? He's Wawa. I'm, I'm actually a Sheets person because I was born on the other side of the mountains and I still have my loyalty towards the Pittsburgh side. But Wawa makes a banging sub. Well, and then there's Bucky's. Then then there's Bucky's, which is like South South, right? I, I actually live in Rudder's territory now, which is in the middle. They've carved out the middle of the state. Rudder's. Rudder's. Never heard of it. Yeah, they're like the newcomer. In the, yeah. But they have good stuff. So. We're going off track here. We're talking about yeah. convenience well, stuff. There should be pinball machines in convenience stuff. From what I understand, other parts of the country. Travel yeah. centers. Yeah. They do. Oh, yeah. And that, like, sad little room that they carve out with, like, sometimes they'll be, like, one of those road, road Sega road drivers, whatever they're called. From what I understand, you know, one of the great things about Allentown, I hear a lot of places around the country do not have convenience stores like we have here that are just, like, loaded. Yeah. With stuff. I guess that has something to do with like the turnpike, right? Because a lot of truckers drive through yes. and. I think everybody just tries to one up themselves. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow. Bucky's. Loves. I don't know. Loves. What was loves? Anyway. <laughs> Anyhow. Now you're hungry. Come um, to the show for the food. Don't yes. worry about the pinball. Or the people. Just, just go across the street <laughs> and just eat a bunch of food. So. So it's uh it's it's ramp time. We just talked to Larry. Have you spoken to Larry? 
I have. Yeah. Really nice guy. That's the first time. We, all all the ramp people that make ramps, we work together yeah. behind the scenes, make sure we don't duplicate. Okay. And uh, so I've emailed him a lot and Mark Davis, who's another person that makes ramps. Yep. Uh, known as Free Play 40 on Pinside. Okay. Uh, we work together, make sure we don't duplicate and we, you know, we trade secrets and, you know, it's just, it's a nice relationship and we all kind of do our own thing. That's terrific. Like, like. Larry has his niche of like more volume yeah. that I could never do, yeah. and uh, it works really well. That's something I really appreciate about this hobby is that there are lots of people who, who don't step on toes, right? Yeah. And they find a way to work together. They find a way to like. It's a hobby. It is a hobby. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's it's terrific. And then, yeah, there is competition sometimes, but I feel like nine times out of ten, it's it's pretty copacetic. Yeah, on our end, it's pretty friendly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So. Plus, it's just, there's so many ramps that need to be done. It's like there's no reason to try and butt in on anything. You know, it's yeah. just like everybody needs ramps. Everybody needs ramps. Everybody needs pinball parts. And guess what? If you don't have a ramp, your machine doesn't work. And it's true. Uh, right, because it's like a major thing. Yeah. I mean, unless it's a early solid state, but true. that's street, a different street level, <laughs> street level games are different story. That's yeah. fine. But yeah, okay. Well, it was a pleasure to talk to you, Jody. Thank you for coming and Thanks seeing us. Beyond. Yeah. And for providing great ramps for us. Hopefully I'll be on Pintech Live again sometime. Yes, that's right. You were on like two months ago, something like that. You talked to Kyle, you talked your ear off. I'm sure you did a much better job than I did. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, y'all, that was a great yes, interview yeah. like a, with Jody. Saying, you guys like learned a little bit about truck stops. We all have our favorites, just like pinball. And now we are going to have the legendary Alan Shaw coming down. I'm going to switch. Good, good. It's nice to see it. Crystal. Crystal. Yep, yep. I believe I've met you. Sure, sure, and through email a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Supply me with pinball parts, and I need pinball parts. We try our best. And not only that, but you, 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 uh, you are so concerned on developing like new parts that are like that are obsolete and hard to find, and like in games that can't work without proper parts. And we just talked to. Yeah, we just talked to two ramps guys, and we were talking about how we always need ramps, and they're always trying to work to get new ramps made, and it's stuff like that, like people that, you know, they make our job easier for everyone else. Yeah, right, I know, yeah. and, and we love you guys so much. Well, that's so appreciated. Thank you, Alan. How long have you been in the industry? Uh, well, I don't know about in the industry, but I've been a pinball uh, freak and uh, a fan since I bought a Simpsons pinball party in December of 2004. And then while I was waiting for that to be delivered, I found a top card at a, my local thrift store for $200. So right away, I had two pinball machines. Oh, and then my college girlfriend saw an ad in her newspaper in Helena, Montana, two pinball machines, $200 each. It was a Comet and a Checkpoint. Okay. It cost 500 to ship them, but still $1,000 for two machines. And, and then that was the start, you know, then I, you know, like, I had a dozen within a couple of years and then I bought out a lazy operator in Brooklyn okay. and put some games out at bars and restaurants. And That's it's terrific. Fun. Yeah, right. And it's certainly fun. And I love watching, like, especially the like, kids and stuff that never really got to play pinball before and they, yep. their eyes open up and they're like, oh my God. Yep. I brought four games to the community room in my building on York Avenue in Manhattan. I put them on free play, yep. and there's a few you know, like families in the building, and the kids, when they saw the film, they literally jumping up and down with excitement, and oh, like, yeah, right, right, and that, like, like you know, I'm not looking to make money on the pinballs down there, you know, it's, it's like you know, climate-controlled storage. I put on a timer from like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. so that they're not on 24 hours a day, because the room is, you know, closed at 5 o'clock, so. You know, just trying to branch out everywhere, and like, I, pinball's blowing everywhere. Like, yeah. 
Like you used to be able to like when you were when I was young, you'd find them you'd find them everywhere. Laundromats, pizzas, Seven yeah. Elevens, yeah. like pretty much everywhere. And like yeah. that's what you know, that's what I like to yeah. to bring back. I think about that a lot. Anytime I'm in like a movie theater or a bowling alley and there's not a pinball machine, I'm going, There's something missing here. Right. Bowling alleys and pinball machines yeah. are supposed to go together yeah. and they and they do. And I've got a couple bowling alleys but uh, there's a uh, a new one well not a new one, but new to pinball a place in in uh, Brooklyn near King's Plaza that called me up and are going to want a couple of machines to start and but how many how about how many machines do you have on location total oh, I would hate to guess maybe think. I help if I don't have them out I help with like about Other 40 people. pinball machines <laughs> no 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 I don't know about a wink I have a little something in my eye <laughs> But anyway, I'm going to jump, but I'll be back tomorrow. And if you're here, I'll okay. stop by and I'll say hello again. All right, Alan. Thanks very Thank much, you. guys. Yeah, it was a pleasure. You're welcome. Alan is great. He's a great customer, a great man. He's been in, been in the industry for a very long time. And he's always a pleasure to talk to. Just a great joy for a pinball. I think, uh, oh, we're going to have more Emoto chats. Some, uh, how about if I... Yes. I had my mic live when you guys were going. Uh -huh. so they heard all about me saying, Kyle going pee. <laughs> Kyle, oh, Kyle. no. It's time to switch out, Kyle. Kyle, where are you? But that was great. Alan's awesome. Yep. He gave me one of my favorite uh, pinball shirts. It's like Pioneer Pinball and it had the little sheriffs. Oh, cool. Thing. And every time I travel across the states, I wear it and people think like I'm an off duty cop. So I love it. Komodo's a cop. Don't mess with her. So, uh, Kyle is coming in. He's buttoning his shirt. Buttoning his shirt. He's getting professional. He's so pro. And he's going to be interviewing some people now. He's in the chat saying hi to y'all. So, hi everyone. We're going to do a swap out, let Crystal break. You've been doing a great job. I've been trying. Yeah. It's been fun, right? Yes. Just talking to people. This. It's a little. So, I'm used to a podcast atmosphere where uh, I'm not yeah, looking at. I'm not looking at people, and no people are looking at me. So this is very intimidating for you, for your girl. I'm. Uh, it's fine. It's just a conversation, right? Yeah. Sure. Okay. All, All right. right. We're gonna do the switch. Do the switch. Why are we using OBS? Why are we using OBS? Can I? Do you want to interview? Do you want to interview me? Can I? Can I stand on that yellow pad? Microphone. That's what I was thinking of doing. Am I going? All right, I would be very bad at live television, but I am okay at live internet. I am here with Rob Carr with Car Circuits uh, at car.us. Uh, properly car.us circuits? Right, there's car.us circuits, is which is how you'll find me if you look into the internet or if you look into things like the tax records, that sort of thing. We always have to keep it official using U.S. government tax documents. Uh, we've talked about, <laughs> we've talked about Rob's products on our show before uh, on Pintech Live. I think it was many many months ago in my Twilight Zone, and we had uh, his genius reset board for the technical people, which intercepts the 12 volts, makes its own 5 volts, and uh, isolates the 5 volt circuit from the driver board, thus making your game not reset when things are going bad. That's exactly correct. Right. Kind of eloquent. It's kind of neat, and it's been very effective, quite frankly. I feel my silly mask sliding down. I don't want to risk the world here. But it, that isolation of that MPU from the rest of the game so that it can still do its thing with its uh, under-voltage sensor, 
and detect it when there really is a problem on the board and shut things down, but not let things that are happening outside throughout the whole system, the whole enterprise of the game, reverberate back into that MPU and shut it down unnecessarily. It's really critical and it's the exciting innovation within that product. That it's been around for since 2014 now, I think, 2013. Okay. And we're closing in actually on 10,000 of them that have been deployed. Wow. So we're, we're above like 8,500 and so that's, that's in the headlights, it's coming. It's exciting. 10,000 units, I think that's quite the milestone. Uh, I mean, it is quite the milestone. It's an incredible thing. I can't tell you how many I've put into customers' games, um, and it just makes people incredibly happy to continue using their pinball machines when they want to play them. But I guess let's talk about the product's wonderful, but what about the man? Pinball or electronic engineering, and what is your background? So I'm an electrical engineer by degree. You getting me okay? I think we're getting you better now. Okay, I'm an electrical engineer by degree from Penn State and Virginia Tech. And I've, you know, I was in the consulting business for a long, long time. And so pinball is a hobby that I've kind of had in the family. My uncle's hanging out off camera. He's scared, he's kind of camera shy. But he has a, a pinball machine that's an EM down in his basement. So it's been in the family for as long as I can remember. And my wife surprised me on my 39th birthday she bought me a cue ball wizard as the present back in 2007. Okay. It was, it's the best present I've ever gotten. Right? It was just joyous. And that brought me into it. It wasn't much longer until I got him out of Harry. And then I had um, the cause of the, my introduction to the reset, which was Party Zone. Ah. And you know, I did all the right things, testing, you know, doing this, do that. None of it would get me. There's just so many gremlins in there. And then I thought about it from the big picture. I was like, oh, what if we change it this way? And I built, I, I wish I had one here. I had these, um, the, the first prototypes. I still have them in my basement. And they're really, really just fun to look at and see. And it worked. And I, I took a big risk. I bought enough uh, materials for like 200 units. And I told my wife, they might take years to sell, but they probably will sell. What a joke. You know, the first night I announced it, like 40 of them sold the first day. It was like, Whoa. where did you announce it first? Was it a Pinside thing or? Yes, it was Pinside. Um, Pinside has been wonderful for the product, the community that's there. It's, it's friendly, they're, they're great people. I, I love participating there. I'm kind of introverted by nature, so I read a lot more than I type. You're probably, you're probably not surprised by that, uh, standing next to an engineer, right? Uh, I don't know, I think I can relate to that. There, there, there's the social side of me that takes, uh, 85% of my energy out of me, I need to go home and not see another human for like a week after this. But and that's nothing, fault, no fault to you, I you know. Do it to you. Yeah, no. Perfect. <laughs> so, and I've leveraged that. I've, I've got other games and I found other problems. You know, I got my Pinball 2000 device that lets you attach the LCD monitors, right? Mm -hmm. I've got the um, LED replacement display boards for the ski ball machines. If you were in my basement, you would find these machines and you would find that I was having the problems and I found better ways to do things. Um, we're working on future products. We're going to be coming out with a, a unique soundboard solution for some of the early Williams machines. We'll be seeing more on that in the next six months. So I'm excited about that as well. I'm excited to deliver more things for the people who need them. And they have to be good. They have to work on my machines first. And they, uh, that, that's kind of how I look at it, right? I think that's fair. I, I, I think, you know, whatever innovation, whatever product people can put out to continue keeping pinball games out of dumpsters, uh, garbage piles, uh, and keep them playing, keep people flipping, uh, keep people enjoying them on location, your basement, your uncle's house, your grandma's house, wherever, uh, you know, these little things really do uh, keep games just in the wild. Right, and I think that's important. Um, the, the, you know, we, we, we're surrounded by a lot of neat vendors here, people doing things to keep unique games alive, singular games alive, but your product, uh, most of your products really span a larger range to keep whole systems in process, right? That's the goal, yeah. Um, but if, it, if it, is, it does need to be very targeted, I can go there, right? I mean, it's, it's almost lucky that WPC sold so well in the 1990s, and there's 50 titles. I mean, that, it's kind of lucky that I landed in that space. Yeah, and the fact that these WPC games are now extraordinarily sought after 
pieces of machinery, um, which I'm glad that people do appreciate them for the wonderful art that they are. Um, there's deficiencies in the hardware, there's deficiencies uh, with every pinball system, but this one, or the, the one that you are probably most well known for solving was the, the five volt reset. And it's just, you know, it, would you say that it was underdeveloped or do you think this is a symptom of age? So I think it's a little bit of both. The, the power supplies themselves, they do decay over time, right? So you, they go from, when they're brand new, they go from about 100% and they work their way down, you know, and right around 90% is when, of original health, is when they start exhibiting the reset symptom. And that's because of that under voltage sensor, right? If that wasn't there, that wouldn't be a problem. But it is there, and it's important that it's there because the chips are kind of sensitive. What is the reset threshold for the stock reset sensor on that board? I always remember, whenever I do a WPC computer, I always use the DS1811, and I think that lowers the reset threshold from like 4.8? 4.65 to 4.75 I think is the range. And I think the They're DS... Very wide tolerance. Sure, but with age, again, it, uh, things are starting to fail on many fronts. I think we... If you are a fan of the show that I put on every week, we've talked about the reset issue a little bit. We haven't actually done any work on it, but that will happen one day. There, there are many fronts you have to attack to solve this issue. A hundred percent to keep the underserved system working, but I'm sorry, going back. Yeah, so when it gets on 90 percent, you can go and rework your boards again and again and again. That was the old way. Now you can run them down 90, 80 percent of health, 70 percent, and you start pushing, right? Yeah, yeah. My pro version senses when you get down to like a 4.1 as your low voltage sensor, that's when you really need to start paying attention. Oh, yeah, I do need to maintain my power supplies, right? There's no magic in the board. It's, it can only deliver power if there's power coming to it, right? Yeah. So it's not magic, but it stretches out for years, literally for years before you have to go in and work on those power supplies again. I think that's what I've referred to it as. It's, a, it's not necessarily a permanent solution, but it's a dang good band-aid. So enjoy your game on your party. You'll probably be able to keep it there for multiple years. Just buy one. If you have a WPC game, you need to buy multiple. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's great. Now, really like quick. If you're already putting an order in at Marco, just throw it on your order that you're already placing. I mean, yeah, yeah, we try to keep them in stock all the time. Um, it, it, I think we do a pretty good job of it. We, I mean, if Rob has sold over 10,000 units, I'd have to say that we have contributed to a bit of that, thanks to you, um, people that buy from us, people that buy from him, people that buy from everyone who owns this stuff. So uh, really quick, I think as a parting thing, I got to enjoy your Type 1 Williams soundboard this morning. Hype. Hype it up. Um, I don't know if I'm ready to hype it up. I want people to know that there's something coming. Okay. In December, I believe I will have it finished. And that'll be the time to really yee-haw. But gosh darn, we're not going to push it out until it's really, really, really good. We like finished ass. products. Yeah, we, we do. there's no half-assing here. There are no things that can fail. We like finished products. Yeah. The product we are talking about is a, the soundboard for the first few Williams Electronics games. Uh, the, sorry, the solid-state versions of these games. So we're talking Flash and uh, Tri-Zone, tri uh, Time Warp. All those games, the bleeps and bloops, um, a good board to replace aging, finicky old things. So you're thinking end of the year potentially. Where can people maybe learn more, maybe sign up to? There's really, you can come see my booth here and you can actually, here in, uh, where are we, Allentown. Yep. And there, there, I do have a little barcode where people can participate in the development of it, but I'm not really putting that out for the whole world because I, I got to throw a concentrated audience uh, with this program. So, you know, yeah. and maybe some people will see this in three or four years and be very happy that they have one in their game now. So, yeah, right. I mean, if I could show a barcode, I would, but, <laughs> you know, what can I do, right? Yeah, you know. So, Rob, it was very nice to talk to you again the second time today. Um, cool. Yeah, I appreciate you coming by earlier, too. It was fun. Thanks for standing in front of our banner under these lights, the bright lights of uh, show business. Uh, Cheers. Thanks, thanks a lot. Now I'm gonna stand here in front of this camera, I guess. All right, over and out. Hey, cheers, man. So, now I've got Emoto. Yeah, I'm gonna interview these two girls right here. Oh, okay, so we have a really exciting interview coming up. I am um, going to gently slide off camera and hand the mic, bye.
Come on down. All right. Are we good? What does that mean? I'm too tall? For once, I'm too tall. I'm usually the short person. All right, so here we have Brielle, Gianna. Gianna. And they are here at Pin Festival 2021 in Allentown. Is this y'all's first time at Pin Festival? No. How many times have you been? Once, I think. How about you? Um, once. Once? All right. We're all, by the way, we're live. Did you know that? There's like 50 people watching you live right now. <laughs> cool. Tell, let's tell everyone how old both of y'all are. I'm um, eight, nine. And how long have y'all been playing pinball? Um, ever since my dad has an arcade. Uh-huh. What's his arcade? Um, coin. It's a public place where people can play arcades at? Where at? Yeah. Um, Seven Sirens. Where is it? Seven Sirens. Awesome. Do you like going there? Yeah. yeah. It's not open anymore. <laughs> but cool. So you guys grew up playing pinball, right? That's awesome. What is your favorite pinball game right now? Because we all know that changes, right? Yeah, Mandalorian. I just played it over there, and I got a really high score. <laughs> fish tails. I love fish tails, and I love Mandalorian. What's your favorite part about each of those games? Mandalorian first. I like um, that it has multi ball, and it's easy to play multi ball. It's a good one. And um, I liked about it that fish tails. Um, I don't really know. You like the art? It's, it's just fun. Right? Yeah. Do you like fishing? I don't go fishing. Me neither, really, and I love fishtails too. There's just something about that game that's awesome. So your dad told me that y'all played in the pinball tournament today, right? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, we played Flintstones. Uh huh. Gianna was really good at it. Yeah. And we played um, Hot Wheels. Uh, ooh, Hot Wheels, that's a good one. So how did y'all do in the tournament? You won any prizes or anything? No, no we just got a poster. A poster? Yeah. Ooh, can we see what poster you got? Yeah. Oh, Dad's handing the poster. Let's see what they won. Gianna got this one and I got this. Gianna. Wow! A 24 and a roller coaster tycoon translate poster. That's amazing. Where are you guys going to put these posters? Um, sell them. <laughs> Say that one more time. We're going to sell them. They're going to sell them. Entrepreneurs at 8 and 9. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to keep it in my room to like, um, figure out a good price to, for it. Yeah. It's very smart. You got to get the good price, you know. So you got eBay or where are you going to sell it? Off the um, eBay. Good. Smart. Dad knows what's up. <laughs> Teaching them young. That's awesome. We have the two business ladies, pinball, playing. Uh, what are you most excited about this show? Like, what has been your favorite part? Uh, uh, talking about our favorite pinball. <laughs> well, what, what about the entire pin festival has been your favorite moment? Um, getting the candy and the posters. The same. All right, do you guys want to give any shout outs to the camera to say hi to your family or anything like that? Um, I have a website called Earth Support Club and we clean up parks and after we get um, food. And after we get food. That's awesome. Uh, say hi to anyone? No. 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 Say hi to your dad. Hi, <laughs> hi, dad. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Um, we're going to see you tomorrow? Uh, maybe. No. We're not. No. They got business to do, y'all. They're selling trans lights. They're willing and dealing. Thank you so much for joining us. Y'all have a great rest of the night. Okay, bye. Wait for the camera. Bye. Yeah. Womp right there. That's awesome. <laughs> I love this place. Pin Festival 2021 is doing a excellent job at bringing so many smiles to everyone's face.
This is one of the first shows, big shows since COVID, since the pandemic, and you can really see how important it is to each and every individual here to see other pinball people, um, to meet and greet with the vendors, to see a, a spooky pinball reveal happening uh, with Ultraman came here. Uh, Jack from Jersey Jack was here shaking hands and kissing babies, but not really because we still don't really do that yet. But it's been really awesome, and um, I'm just uh, honored to be here. So thanks, everyone. We're going to tune out for just a second, and we'll see if uh, we get more people to interview. I should put like background music, right? Our viewers are pretty cool too. We have Mr. Lope helping us all weekend long. He came from New Hampshire, I think. Maine. He's from somewhere. Maine? No, I live in Maine now, yeah. You live in what? I live in Maine. He doesn't live in Maine. Did you really come from Maine? Yeah, I, I moved two miles from my old apartment and now I live in Maine. Whoa. I don't understand the Northeast. <laughs> We're going to see if we can get uh, more people on. Let's see. The show closes in 20 minutes. Oh, no. Yeah. Dang. Kyle only yeah, did tired. one interview. We did not eat dinner. That's my fault because I started live streaming. And uh, I, was supposed show to, biz, baby. I was supposed to feed everyone. Mr. Lump's sitting eating some french fries and some sun chips. Yeah. Mark's old french fries. What are you guys going to do? Um, I guess that's it. We'll just uh, jump on camera and do the final sign off. Because, yeah. Georgia Pinball says feed me. Alright, Mr. Loaf, you're coming with me. Check this out. I don't have to, oh wait, is the lower third still on? So we're not yeah. Brienne and Gianna? Oh yeah, see he's a professional. It's so awesome having Mr. Loaf with me. Okay, I call him Mr. Loaf. It's his nickname because he's bad out of hell by Meat Loaf on Twitch. He's always there with us on our Pintech Live, but really it's Ty Ueda. Right? Yeah, Ueda, as in you ate a burger. Yeah. <laughs> you ate a burger. This guy's great. 
Uh, we've been working together, creating content of Pin Festival. We'll uh, do some editing of some B-roll he shot earlier, and mostly we'll be live again tomorrow. Uh, Ty, Mr. Loaf, I feel weird calling you Ty. It's just like feels. <laughs> the, amount, the amount of people who have come up to me that I haven't met in person, and they they they're like, oh, it's Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf, and that's like, or it's it's Meatloaf, and, or it's Mr. Loaf. And yeah, yeah, it's. It's, it's contagious, so. Awesome. So what has been your favorite part of the show so far? Well, my uh, uncle uh, actually came in, uh, was at the show today, and he's the dude who's responsible for my, my whole uh, pinball obsession. So it was really nice uh, getting to play a very, very brutal Paragon, which was a lot of fun. Uh, that was one of his favorite games. And, um, yeah, I think, I think just having that small moment with him was real, real nice, so. That's what it's all about, all those small but priceless moments in pinball. And you only like System 80 games, right? I'm putting words in his mouth, but he's obsessed with these. I'm, obs I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with System 80 games. Uh, uh, I Yeah, I'm a glutton for punishment, and uh, I love uh, technical and practicality, and... Uh, yeah, and if that big house over there keeps having reset issues, I'm absolutely going to go and buy it. This guy was over here like, stop telling him what to uh, do, Tom. Uh, don't help him fix it. It's I'm trying to buy that. I want to fix it. Um, no, but uh, but it was also like really, it was really cool watching Todd just like hear the, the like, you know the error noise and it just instantly like his brain just went off and he was like it says this and this and then like went over it and literally within a minute of looking at it like properly diagnosed what was wrong with it oh and he walked over there and actually yeah, helped yeah. him and he was just like yeah your cpo is acid damage on it it's ruined like you, you. <laughs> it was, i mean it was pretty it was pretty impressive just a yeah i mean just you, you know just watching his brain kind of work in real time to go and fix an issue was was pretty neat so wait, if the CPU has acid damage, do you still want to buy it? Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm that easy fix, right? Uh, well, you can uh, you can get some nice. Uh, uh, Marks over here, like. Mm. I know uh, uh, Fred uh, Fred Swimmer, I think makes uh, repro boards for System 80, and you can also uh, make those work for System 80B, um, which I think Big House is a System 80B game. It looks. It's like it's pretty late, late in there. Looks like a B. But uh, but yeah, no, I just uh, I love Gottlieb games. I love games that people hate. I think that's my that's my big thing. Do you so like you consciously? Well, okay, I'm not gonna ask that question because my favorite game is Hard Body, <laughs> and, and a rules. lot of that game rules. Okay, yeah. now I understand why we connect. Hard Hard Body is a fantastic game. It's got that flex save, flex save. Um, yeah. Awesome. So you told us who got you into pinball, but what is it about pinball that made you totally fall in love and just completely, Joe Lamar, ladies uh, and gentlemen, Joe. that made you completely just go all in into the pinball industry, community, everything? Um, I grew up playing uh, uh, Microsoft Pinball Arcade on, uh, on my computer, which, was, which was, is probably still my favorite digital rendition of like of 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 pinball um and it came out for like windows 98 or something and it was the graphics were great the jam like the physics of it were pretty impressive for that era so not and space cadet no no this is pre-space cadet and it but they looked real professional they had a they had a different gottlieb game from every era or from every decade and the one they had from the 80s was haunted house and haunted house blew my mind because I when I looked at it on uh, on the computer it like I couldn't understand how it physically worked and then in 2015 I went to Portland Oregon for the first time where my brother lives and went to ground control big shout out to ground control great spot um, and uh, they had a haunted house and I just sat there and played it for an hour straight and just said like I absolutely need to own one of these um, and uh, then through a lot of pestering a lot of people I ended up getting one a few years later and so that I got that game in a big 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 haul of games all at once and so wait okay so how many pinball machines do you own the age-old question I I own 12 games uh, and uh, six of them are up and running and then six of them are in like a restoration queue so nice. so you like fixing pinball machines and tinkering yeah yeah what is it about that that 
you love to do? Like most people are like, ah, just call a technician. You know, we like to promote Pin Deck Live, empowering you to work on your own pinball machines, but you're already there. So like, what is it about working on your own games that makes you do it day by day? Well, I think you wouldn't be into pinball if you weren't into problem solving. Whether it be whether it's playing it uh, or or working on it or fixing them or figuring out how the hell you're going to get three of them in your car, um, it, it's uh, it's everything in pinball is a, is a form of problem solving. And I think there are people who are just drawn to solving issues. Um, and I I yeah I don't know I think I think part of it is that I. Yes, something called masochism. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think there's just something about um, uh, just being able to diagnose and fix problems uh, in a way that I felt was pretty tangible. Um, and I just love the ball. Just love playing ball. Love throwing ball. It's the best. So what has been your most like proudest technical feat in pinball repair? Where you're like, I can't believe I just did that and I did it. Uh, getting haunted house to work after be like arriving dead and then and then getting haunted house to work was 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 the biggest challenge uh, that I think I've ever heard because that game is like there's a reason everyone hates it is because there's always something to go wrong with that game um, but uh, I shopped it out a couple years ago uh, or like two years ago uh, no actually that was one of my pandemic projects was 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 taking everything off putting it all back together getting all the boards serviced and worked and I haven't had a single issue with it since so I feel I feel I feel very proud that that game has never given me an issue since so Aww, that's awesome all right you said 12 games we're all curious let's go ahead and list them all off oh okay uh, from front to back uh, earliest one would be slick chick uh, followed by I love slick chick yeah there's actually there's a few of them on the if you if I if anyone at pinfest uh, gets a chance to play either of those slick chicks on the floor. They're both in really good shape. All right, I'm gonna cut you off. Yeah, yeah. Quick trivia: What was Slick Chick supposed to be called before oh, it got gosh. released as Slick Chick? I have no idea. This guy now? From Michael Gottlieb himself, it was gonna be called wow. Part, not him. Oh, okay. Not the guy behind the camera. Yeah, I was just like I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. Uh, it, used, it was gonna be called Party Girls. And then it had a negative connotation, so they decided to make a slick chick. Anyways, continue. Yeah, That's that, number one. That, like, yeah, I don't know if that if it's any better as slick chick, but uh, uh, so this uh, slick chick, um, Wild Wild West by uh, also Gottlieb. One of the it's the best two-player Gottlieb ever made. Um, then there's uh, Lawman, uh, Atlantis, Volley. Uh, Haunted House, Black Hole, Mars God of War, Rocky and Bullwinkle, uh, which is also one of the most underrated uh, underrated games ever. Um, and then, oh, I guess I sold a couple games. I guess it's just ten. Uh, and then Indiana Jones, uh, that is sitting sitting ready to be ready to be sold, ready to go to a loving home. So. That is an excellent collection. Those are all System 80 games? No, no, no. no. I was like, Wait, no, that doesn't those, sound right. Those are, those I thought just, you said you only collected System 80. No, those are the, those are just the games I love. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Mars God of War, great game. Uh, bought a Counterforce playfield today. It's in great shape. Great game. Uh, probably going to go buy uh, Mr. Engel's uh, Counterforce Backlass because it's a great game. Uh, and uh, then I'll find one that's just beat to piss and eventually I'll uh, I'll do the full playfield swap and a new glass and make it all look pretty. So, yeah. And you're starting to live stream all of this process too now, right? Oh, well, you yeah. did your live stream and you had like the record player, like some vinyl oh, and music. Yeah. yeah. You got some copyright infringements on that, oh, yeah. you know what well, I'm saying? I, yeah. But uh, well, it, it looks great. How 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 slow I can play Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf in its entirety and not have it get DCMA'd. <laughs> but wonderful. Cool. Well, thanks for chatting with me, and thank you so much for helping us with Marco oh, yeah, TV yeah. and the booth all weekend long, dude. Hopefully, hopefully uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing more. So. All right, yay! Mark's behind the camera clapping. Do we have another interview? Is there... Oh, cool. Come on down. Mr. Loaf, can you help us with some lower thirds? I'll have you stand right here. All right, he's going to go ahead and set up. Remind me your name again. Lloyd Stegen. Stegen? Lloyd. Yeah. Just everybody butchers it, don't feel bad. How do you spell it? S T E 
G E N G A. S T E G E N G A. Lloyd. Steginga. Steginga. She got it. Just like that. I feel like You're it's important. I think you? it's important to say people's names properly. Lloyd, I think, yeah, Lloyd, is, it, it is important, but I think the most part is, is that if you could just say Lloyd, I think there's not many Lloyds out there anymore. Two L's, right? Two L's. Okay, good. Yeah, it's not <laughs> Lloyd, it's Lloyd. <laughs> that happened a lot to you? Well, ask that guy. I mean, you know, my audience, they always call me Lloyd. <laughs> I think he's just joshing with you at that yeah, point. Nah, everybody's jealous. Got a great name like that, you know? All right, Lloyd, what brings you to PinFest 2021? We love the show. Come out for a great time. You know, you want to see some pinball. You want to buy some parts from you guys. You want to experience all the local flavors from food to you name it. Is that your phone ringing? Yeah, see, I'm an important kind of guy. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> Mr. Popular over here. Yeah, absolutely. But, no, PinFest is a great, great show. I mean, for, you know, for a great variety of reasons, from food to actually the people that come to actually the great deals on machines and actually the camaraderie in the pinball community, so. Very cool, and how long have you been coming to PinFest? Uh, this will be my, I've been coming here for about 10 years. So yeah, it keeps growing bigger and bigger and it's just great every time. It's never been a disappointment. Very cool, and do you have a booth or games here? We actually have a booth. We're just selling some leftover parts from restorations. And um, yeah, we actually have a booth and we uh, brought some games for sale, but definitely uh, trying to play some new ones too. Nice. And what what's your company's name? Uh, we don't have a company. We're just collectors. You gotta come up with a name right now on Marco TV. What's your company's name, Lloyd? Uh. Uh. Yeah, we're those guys. Those guys. <laughs> those guys. Pinball.com. You hear it first on Marco TV. I'm gonna trademark that too. Watch out. <laughs> That's awesome. So what has been the most exciting thing you've seen at PinFest? I think the new games have been great. I think... Did you play Ultraman? I did not yet, no. Yeah. You know you want to, though, right? It's a long line! I, I, well, come on. You're not getting any younger, you know? Come on. you got to wait sometime, you know? <laughs> but no, um, yeah, a lot of new great, great games, Guns N' Roses, Ultraman's here. Um, hopefully I'm praying and tomorrow I'll have a chance to actually catch up and play those games. So, um, and... Obviously seeing you folks. It's not like I see you guys every day, you know? So some of the great things is all the vendors that, that are here, parts manufacturers like yourself. So that's a big plus for those guys that, like myself that are in the restoration market. Very cool. So what is your most proudest restoration project? Uh, and when was it? And what was it? <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep you guys guessing for like five seconds, okay? <laughs> Okay, we're over already. But no, um, I guess my crown jewel would be my Tales of the Arabian Nights. So full ground up restoration with lots of parts from you folks, obviously. So um, no expense was spared and uh, it looks like it's brand new again. So, so when you restore your games, uh, do you plan on selling them later or do you try to keep some of your pride and joys at your house? I, I actually, you know, it's a passion, you know, for this hobby. It's a labor of love. So there's so much that goes into it. I keep it for myself, but I tend to sell some, you know, from time to time, but I don't like to. You got to make space. You got to make space. Something's got to go. And, you know, I've actually sold games and actually bought them two, three times over. So it's like they come back into the house. And it's like, okay, they're going to hear, they're here to stay now. They just, they don't go anymore. It's it. They're staying put. So, yeah. It was it like the same exact same game or like a different like you know serial number and everything like wow this game just traveled all the way here and five years later i own the exact same pinball machine like cabinet it's the same title so like for those of you out there watching you might have an adams family you say ah this game sucks and then you end up buying you sell it and then you regret it and then you end up buying another adams family then yeah i've heard this yeah thing. so and then Again, you sell it and you say, ah, oh, this time I'm going to buy another one. So a lot of my collections have been two threes, 
until I finally said, that's enough, I'm, I'm sticking with what I got, so. But has it ever happened to you where you got the exact same game and you're like, you know because that mark is when you were trying to load it into your house and you scuffed the wall and it scuffed the spot of the cabinet and you're like, that's my game. <laughs> it's happened to me once, yes. It's gone Which full game? circle. <laughs> <laughs> See, <I knew> it. <laughs> I've actually had my, <laughs> The one game that's come back to me three times has been Adam's Family. <laughs> and every time it's just, you know, the same one. I'm like, wait a minute, I sold this a year ago to this guy. It ended up from here to there. So, of course, it just, it's, it's, kind of, it's like it's traveled the country without me, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like a time capsule. Next time before you sell it, you should put like a secret note in the cab for you. So when it comes back around, you can like, dear Lloyd, <laughs> I missed you. <laughs> And they can tell me when it's coming back. See, yeah, that's a great idea, guys, you know? So I'm going to have to do that next time for sure. Awesome. Um, before PinFest closes down and kicks us all out, which they like to do when we cry, um, tell me more about your collection. How many games do you have? I'm up to 22 games. Yeah. You know? So um, I'm basically a Bally Williams guy, so all the Twilight Zones and Theater Magics and Tech from Mars, all the... The classic 90s stuff is what I'm into. So, yeah. Awesome. You should get a hard body. Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. It's almost 90s. It's almost 90. That's like saying a, you know, a Chevy Cruze can keep up with a Corvette. It just doesn't. <laughs> you can try, but it just doesn't do it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Where are you based out of? Are I'm you actually local? out of Holland, Michigan is where I'm from. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a drive for us, about 11 hours. So, yeah. It's worth, it, yeah. it's worth it, people. It's worth it. Just make the trip. We drove like 12 and a half as well, yeah. all the way from Columbia. Yeah, you all know how it is, you know. <laughs> Pack up in the van and just go. So, definitely worthwhile. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I'm yeah, glad I got to talk me. to you. Yes. Yeah, and um, what's next for you? Uh, I'm working on a scared stiff. So, yes, yeah, that's my next project. So, yeah. And is there any place where people can find you later? Besides those guys, pinball.com, which is not made yet, but it'll, it's in the process. Look for us at the shows. We're generally here. We're, we definitely do Chicago Expo, and we also do uh, Pinball at the Zoo in Michigan. So, yeah. Cool. Well, I'll definitely see you at Expo this year. Sounds good. Well, thank you again for your time. Thanks. All right, y'all. We're going to get kicked out of here. Kyle, come with me. Look at this. This is like me and Jack Danger's relationship, but it's Kyle and an inch taller. We've got, this is, this is Kyle and Emoto unfiltered. Um, this is what we look like when we are next to each other. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, which is why we green screen everything, because I can't walk around with Apple box shoes. Let's be serious here. Yep, no. Now I feel like I'm being interviewed and I feel just as uncomfortable as everyone <laughs> I've stuck a microphone into their face. Um, All right, well, but we're going to leave. We'll be back tomorrow yes. at some point. We'll Kyle's going to go do karaoke tonight or something. No, no, no. no. Karaoke's tomorrow now. We're going to go drink uh, beer with the O'Neills and potentially hang out with new friend Cliff Albert. Oh, so follow karaoke's tomorrow. But Cliff Albert is streaming his brand new, I don't know if I'm supposed to reveal, but you're hearing it first here. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. He just got an Iron Maiden, and his Twitch is Warlock Pinball? I believe so, yeah. He's a cool dude. I really like that guy. I'm glad I met him. And he has an awesome pup named Andy. Hi, Andy. All right, we're signing off. We will see you guys. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed our live stream. Yeah, we're streaming. Um, we're going to go ahead and raid someone on Twitch. So if you guys are on Twitch, please stick around so we can show love to another pinball streamer. Yeah, let's see. If you guys have any suggestions on who we should raid, drop it in the chat. Otherwise, I am searching. On the screen, la la lord. All right, let's go to 
Mutter Futter. Oh, that's funny. Is wait. All right, we're gonna go watch Mutter Futter play Rick and Morty. How about that? So let's go do that together. Show some spooky love. Once I get to. I'm starving. I. It's like I gotta eat. I don't wanna just like roll. It's still cool <laughs> They're sitting here planning. They're all like, why didn't Emoto's feed us dinner? Why? So. I'm so sorry. So I, I don't, I, it butter. might be one of Brian's friends. Him and Allison went out Wait, to dinner with their friend it? that they're staying here with. Oh, okay, word. So it's not like a group of folks. Gotcha. Um, well, I was just, I was just saying because... My, like, my, is live. Like, like, sorry, you guys gotta hear Mr. I do not. Talk. I no. can understand us like and being like, hey, meet us like, at some other place. Don't later, See, I, that I do not want to hang out with 10 people. The last thing I want to do is eat dinner with 15 Sorry. fucking people. Oh, look, yeah, Penelope! Yeah. All right, let's do this, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out. And remember, tomorrow, when we're interviewing people, feel free to ask questions in the chat, and we'll tell whoever the host is interviewing and get your questions answered now too oh kids are ready to go home all right goodbye oh word that was fun was it intense